start of day two. It's about 8 a.m. this morning. It is freezing, like five, 10 degrees lower. It dropped overnight. It's time to pack up all of our stuff and hit the road. Whew. Chilly one today. Did you know that it's apparently supposed to snow in Porto? It's pretty dang chilly. Uh, got my tea. Let's go over the game plan. Starting from La Bruges, or just a little bit south of La Bruges, and we're gonna keep going up the coastal route here until we make it to Villa de Condo. And then we're gonna cut across this route that doesn't actually exist to get all the way up here to Rates. Pretty sure it's not Rates. I don't know, that's what it says. There's still quite a bit left to go on this Camino. We end all the way up. Even further, actually, hold on. We end all the way. It's, it's not even on the map. So yeah, we're basically making it up as we go along today. We haven't booked anywhere to stay for tonight just yet, and honestly, there doesn't look like there's a lot of availability. What I'm really hoping to have happen is that once we connect up with the main, like the central route, somehow we're gonna start feeling this Camino a little more Camino-esque, because all of yesterday, all of our first day was just us with the exception of seeing one other pilgrim. And I'd just like to connect with more. It's pretty good. So we left our cozy little mobile home in a campsite in the middle of nowhere to start our 28 kilometer walk with nothing planned and no place to stay. Yet. I am not sure how the central route is gonna beat this because the ocean is incredibly beautiful. It is very windy, very chilly. So I can see how, especially if it starts raining, that it's going to be very uncomfortable. It's so beautiful. And you can't get lost, you just fall to the coast. The coastal route is the second most popular of the two routes in Portugal. Only 20% of pilgrims walk any of the Portuguese Caminos. We expected it to be less busy, but not like this. Before we could go over to the Centro, we had to stop for one more break. So we're on the hunt for food, and there are a lot of different options here. Some that are like 15 euros, 20 euros per plate, which is a little bit out of our budget. But then there are a lot of cafes, or they call them bars here, and I think that's our jam, where we can get a latte, maybe a beer, maybe a sandwich for like five euros. Oh, wow. Now we're getting a full-on three-course meal with the white wine for eight euros each. And bread. <sighs> Such a relief. That is a generous pour of wine. I think there's like half a bottle in here. Oh my god, yes. Yes. This is a big fried pork cutlet right here. French fries on the side. You guys, you guys know how I feel about French fries by now. Spirits are lifted. Interesting, steamy, warm looking dish, which is rice with chicken, I think. But it looks really, really good and meaty. <laughs> it's very earthy, irony. This morning we left around 10 a.m. and I was feeling super nervous that we weren't leaving on time because I think when we were in the front desk, there was just this urgency to leave at like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. And I don't know what it's like here, but I messaged a couple of guest house or casas and I don't know, I haven't heard from them yet. In the meantime, you know, better day. Nothing like a good Stairmaster after a lunch and a wine. The city's just blowing me away, like all these huge arches. I don't know if they were old aqueducts. It's just amazing, they're just right through the center of town, just forever, as far as the eye can see. I mean, even keep going further that way. Oh, so cool. Things were actually going pretty well. It just keeps going, this whole route so far that connects uh, the coastal route up to the central route. Maybe it's just, maybe this is just the new boardwalk, so we're just gonna follow this thing the whole way. Until. Uh, one of the guest houses and they said, Hello, I'm sorry, but I can't receive you because the house is under maintenance. Days like today where you start to see there's only three total accommodations available 
and one of them now says they can't house you. I'm starting to panic a little bit. But we are we are really out there today. <laughs> we're really kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Today's been mostly navigationally lost. Like we've been following the aqueducts and then that all of a sudden stopped. They just kind of walled off the pathways on either side of it. So now we're just on random side roads trying to get back to the aqueducts to then continue our way up. I'm really hoping that this place gets back to us for a place to stay because we are starting to get tired. Where are we? It felt like we had made a pretty big mistake. This is one of those roads where you're just like, should I be here? Is this actually going to take me to where I need to go? We were too far from the last town to go back. The only way was to just keep going. Okay, yeah, this path is, uh, this is a little something special out here. This is pretty great. It's a little wetter than we were expecting and definitely a lot more remote than we were expecting. Yeah, we're about out of gas. We've probably walked like 16, 18 miles already today. Also, do you see that big, big truck? The tractor driver was super confused as to why we were in his backyard, but nicely pointed us in the right direction. It seems like the path to the central route was not going to be as easy as we hoped. Ah! He must, they must have just back. They have a room with a private bathroom available. Should I take it? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah how much is it? 50, 50 euros. Sure. Just let them know that we're coming. Yes, that's awesome. about a mile to go. We are going uphill, of course, but sun is shining, no rain. It's so beautiful. We're surrounded by all these amazing eucalyptus trees. It smells so good here and tractor free so far. Civilization, the town. Just like yesterday, you know, we're like 15, 16 miles in and the wheels just fall off. Every step is pain. Somehow, somehow that last kilometer just goes by super easily. And I think it's because we know that there's a bottle of wine and some delicious food on the other end. <laughs> we made it. Hey! <laughs> After 17 miles of mud, sun, and just being lost all day, it felt really, really nice to make it to the hotel and to find the central route. Oh gosh. Yes. Room tour? Uh. In a little bit. <laughs> Took me a while longer to get up than I thought. <laughs> Coming on in. We're at Casa do Vila. There's a really nice, comfortable bed. Really hard to get up after you've sat down or laid down. Nice chair, big fridge, a heater, which is really important because it's actually really chilly right now. I think it's in the 50s, but it's gonna dip down to the 40s tonight. And then we have our own private shower. And bathroom. And that's it. All of this was 50 euros total. Tell me what we're doing. We're gonna go eat dinner now. There it is. That looks great. Some... Yeah, so we're the only ones here. Totally empty house. It's potato soup. Super good. I'm starting to become predictable. All right. That was great. Yeah, dinner was great. Soup, salad. I got the veal and rice. You got the fish and chips. And yeah. it was seven fifty per person. And a glass of red wine. Yeah. Beer for you. Total value. Oh, are they open? Oh. This is what we got. And this great store. Great store. Cutest dog. Open up the bottle of wine for us. Full service. It's time to wine and recline. <sighs> Big day today. So, topic of conversation today is losing weight or getting in shape on the Camino. It feels like coming into the Camino with the intention to lose a bunch of weight and to get in shape is an awesome intention to come in with, but you have to be really, really like locked down on the food that you're eating because there's so much delicious food and it's so cheap and all of it is so calorically dense everywhere that you go. You're talking about how like even though it's really really tiring like day two today was really hard for me. Mm -hmm. I think I was stressed, I was tired. 
but like there's no feeling like walking 18 miles every single day and feeling accomplished and I think it's because generally we don't spend that much time I mean at our jobs in normal life we're not always moving and I just don't think that that's the way that we're supposed to be so like I, get, I agree, we were pretty excited about starting the Camino because I think we were excited about getting our bodies moving and just having a routine and having a very clear quest and goal. And with the added side benefit slash hope of losing weight. So I started this Camino, I weighed myself just before I left. I weighed myself just before I left and I was at 198 pounds, which is like 25 more than I want to be. So I'm hoping by the end of this Camino that I am 10 pounds less, that I'm 188. That's what I'm like hoping will happen. Let me just quick run the numbers because we got, we got two days of data. You guys know how much I, I love the data. So it looks like we're burning like 2,000 calories per day and it's been that same amount for both days. Now Apple Health and every single other calorie trackery or health tracker thing trackery. always overestimates, which if a pound of fat on the human body is 3,500 calories and I'm only losing like one to 1,500 per day. That means it takes three days to lose a pound. Yeah, or two days, three days to lose a pound is what we're at if I'm walking like 18 miles every single day. So you're losing nine pounds. So you might reach your goal. Yeah, so maybe I'll reach your goal. Maybe I'll reach your goal, but that's also just- You gotta just... stop doing these wine and recline. <laughs> yeah, but this is the best part of the day. This is the best part of the day. I don't know, maybe you guys tell us, would you come on the Camino to lose weight? I personally don't think a lot of people will go with that specific intention. Yeah. Like our whole intention from the Camino documentary was never about losing weight. It's a side benefit sometimes. For sure. And I do remember receiving a lot of comments like, you guys are looking really slim or, Wow, you're gonna lose a lot of weight on this, but like... It didn't really happen so much. It's really okay if it doesn't either. Yeah. We're not trying to tell people what to do, but... Uh, but a thing that I can say is after the Camino, both of us felt way healthier. Oh yeah. Both of us felt way more active, way more capable, had way more energy than before we started the Camino. All right, we're gonna call it a night. We gotta get up early because it is supposed to be raining for the next two straight days and we wanna make it to the next town before it starts pouring. All right, wish us luck. See you tomorrow.